Hey guys, John Grimsmo here, uh, here with my brother Eric Grimsmo. We are showing you Knife Making Tuesday week 18. Uh, there was not a week 16 or 17 because my machine has been broken and seriously pissing me off for the past two weeks. But I finally just got it all fixed up and we've got a bunch of upgrades put onto it and all kinds of fun things. Um, so today for Knife Making Tuesday we are making some, uh, some more blades for the Norseman. So we've got a piece of um, RWL 34. This is the last bit that I have right now. We're gonna get two blades out of this and make them today. Uh, right now what Eric's working on is he's zeroing all the tools that we're gonna be using in our fancy dancy uh, call it tool holders. Notice they're all, all numbered, seven, four, 11, two, whatever. So he's zeroing them one by one so that the computer knows exactly how long each one is and remember, so all you have to do is swap it out and uh, you don't have to touch anything else. Um, so for a program that uses one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tools, this saves a lot of time. So basically he's just going down real close and then you go down bit by bit by bit until that little shim doesn't move. Um, so that's what he's up to. And then probably tomorrow we're going to make some more handles, two more sets of handles um, in titanium for the Norseman. Because this weekend we have the Canadian Knife Makers Guild uh, show, the trade show, in Toronto that we got a booth for. So we're going to be there showing off our wares. And uh, having been down for the past two weeks, we haven't hardly made anything. Um, so we got a lot of catching up to do. Today's Tuesday, the show starts Friday night, so we're gonna be busy. But, um, so what else did we do? Don't know if I showed you all of these in my week 15 video, but Eric made all these thumb studs on our CNC lathe. There's like 45 of them here. I anodized this guy blue. There's a bronze one in there, I think in the corner here. And uh, so anyway, all the thumb studs, they still have to be finished, machined and stuff. But tonight, um, we're working really hard because after we machine the blades, we've got about four hours until we're supposed to be at Brian Ty's house because he's gonna heat treat these for us. And with any luck, he'll let us do some filming, but don't count on it. We'll see what he says. I respect his privacy if he wants it. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna make some blades and then heat treat them later tonight. Here's my new tool changer, pneumatic cylinder, brackets and stuff. So he's just gonna lift it up a bit higher for this longer tool. Check out how fast this is. Done. All right, so... Ah, crap, stop, stop, stop. Uh, but you bet you I need a little bit more RPM to do that. Okay, now I have to re zero. Let's try this again. I cranked up the RPMs just a little bit. Much better. I'm at 2200 RPMs now, 3.8 uh, feed rate. That even sounds better. So this is a .17 drill bit, because uh, all three holes are being reamed for uh, 3 sixteenths, .1875. So that just goes up, goes back to X0, Y0. Ready for tool change, it says change to T11 which is this guy, Reamer. Let's see if I can hold this on my chin. <laughs> Sorry. So here's the button. Tool comes out, new tool goes in. Ah, just like that. Ta-da. Should've put you on a tripod. Uh, and then this is gonna spin real slow.
Beautiful. I also mo uh, mounted an amp gauge. You can see it's pulling three amps when it does that. Just 0.5 running normally. As it's cutting, three amps. So using that gauge, which is an awesome addition to my machine, I can tell how hard the motor is actually working. And I know I can usually get six amps without any problems. So as long as I keep it under six, uh, I know the machine is happy. So, okay, so those are reamed. Next tool is a quarter inch ball, and that's gonna engrave, or that's gonna cut the, um, the grind of the blade. And I'm gonna do it much different than this one. I'm gonna do a very tight step over so it's not gonna look this stupid. And you see all the, uh, all the little divots right in front of my thumb? I have fixed that by installing bigger ball bearings in my ball screws. So those should be non-existent this time around. So let's uh, go. The first side done and the profile, looking pretty tasty. Still gotta do the other side. So we're gonna flip it over right now, this way. Bit of an interesting development. So we machine one side of the blade and we just noticed how incredibly warped it is. Look at how much light you can see between those two pieces. It's like crazy warped. And I noticed because when I put it back down, it's like, rocking side to side so be good to see Brian tonight because he machines blades like this all the time out of this steel so see what he says about that look at how warped this thing is see this side's bolted down snug weird now this is what we do when the machine is doing its thing. Hello guys. I'm not very happy with myself right now. Um, where did Eric put that other blade? There it is. Okay. This blade turned out okay. Definitely some improvement to be made. Uh, it turned out way too thin. So it's gonna definitely gonna be a razor blade edge thickness, which is not what I was going for. And because it was too thin, there's a whole ton of chatter on this side, which is gay and ugly and gross and stuff. Um, but you can see at the top here, at the top of the grind, a big lip. That's because it started too deep to begin with. Same thing happened on this side. And the engravings are a lot deeper. Everything's just deeper than I wanted it to be. So I thought I would fix that with the second blade. And uh, things were going okay until I started to drill my um, .171 holes. These are gonna be reamed for 3 16 And I was an idiot and I used a chipped drill bit. I saw that it was chipped, like just a tiny chip, you know, worn out. But I decided to keep using it anyway because I'm a freaking retard. Um, and it actually burned up this hole. I saw a red hot end mill. Um, that's a er, drill bit, sorry. That's my drill bit. You know what a drill bit's supposed to look like? Not that. That's actually the second drill bit I've used in a row. Thought I could clean it up with the second one? Nope.
So, um, which means that this whole piece of uh, blade steel is garbage. Maybe not garbage. I could use a small, or I could cut a smaller blade from it, but I don't have any designs for smaller blades yet, so I'll keep it around. But which means I am only bringing one blade to Brian's tonight for heat treat, and it's an ugly blade. But somewhere there's a positive side, I'm sure. Um, the positive side is I've been talking with other knife makers, trying to figure out, you know, how best to do my flipper mechanism and my, my lockup for that matter. Uh, Cause all my test blades and even the finished one that I have don't lock up very well. And everybody says, cut the lock bar at, or the lock, uh, lock tang after, after heat treating and make a jig so that you can cut it once, test fit, move it over, cut it again, test fit, move it over, or move the tool over. Uh, and that way you can tweak the fit up. Because the way I was doing it before, it was a one-time shot. And if it didn't get it right, then the whole blade was floppy. And there was no real way to go in there with a file and tweak it up again. So I'm going to make a fixture that's basically going to hold the blade like this. And then a big two-inch face mill uh, is going to go down and cut the lock bar like that. And that way I can adjust it. Um, boy, that is an ugly blade. Just the edge grind. I could hear it chattering while I was cutting too. The other side's okay. Not perfect, but acceptable. Because when I was cutting this side, it just had full material on the back to support it. When I was cutting this side, it had nothing to support it. And it was really thin. So, it just chattered and jumped around and I'm not too happy. But anyway, at least now we're not strapped for time like we would have been had my second blade finished. Right now, as you can see, I'm gonna use tool 12 to uh, cut the bearing pocket. This is where the ball bearing's gonna go. And I found it's best to do this uh, after all the machining um, so that I can put it, I just found that it happened to fit between these two bowls. Keeps it pretty flat. I zeroed it on the center of the hole and that way I can zero exactly from the face and go down 25 thousandths, I think. Flip the blade over, zero on the face again, go down 25 thousandths. And if I do this wrong, then the blade's not centered. So, uh, it's got it in my pocket here. This first one that I did, as you can see, the blade is not very centered. And I think this will cure that, hopefully. So even though the blade is sort of a gong show and uh, the edge is too thin and kind of ugly, maybe at least we can get the blade centered, uh, I can get the blade to lock up properly, and I can get the flipper action to be exactly where I want it to be. And if I can do all that from this blade, I will be stoked. Please don't tell me I just... Uh. Oh my god. I know what I did. Ah, I'm an idiot. I put tool 12 in the spindle. I zeroed it. Did not tell the computer this was tool 12. So as you probably saw, it just plunged right down all the way through because the offset was completely wrong I'm such an idiot I'm still learning this tool changer okay luckily this is my 3 16 stop pin uh, you know there would be a 3 16 pivot bolt through here it's sloppier than I want it to be but it's still gonna work so luckily all is not lost Holy crap. Okay. Please work this time.
Okay, that is how it's supposed to be. Okay, flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Hey guys, John and Eric here. Um, just wrapping up my week 18 video. Uh, so, today's Wednesday. Last night we went to Brian Ty's and uh, left the blade with him for heat treat. And uh, respectfully, he didn't want uh, any video done at his shop, so that's cool. But we were there for, what, like an hour, hour and a half, mm -hmm. asking him a thousand questions. And I mean, he's been doing this for 15 years. We learned a lot. Yeah. yeah. And what else? So he's got the blade right now. Uh, he lives about an hour away, so instead of going out there uh, today, I'm going to see him on the weekend at the Canadian Knife Makers Guild show. So he's just going to bring the blade there. And it'll be heat treated and rough and, you know, still need quite a bit of finishing work. But we'll have it. And then we can drill the detent, we can cut the lock bar, uh, the lock face tang thingy and uh, hopefully we will have a knife that flips and locks and detents perfectly even if the blade you know could use some upgrades uh, so today Eric and I made another set of handles one Norseman two Norseman pretty much the same thing Whoa. except <laughs> uh, his set has the diamond pattern on both sides mine just has it on the one side And it turned out pretty cool. Uh, due to some variances, they went really deep on one side and not so deep on the other side. Is it going to focus? Probably not. Focusing on your face. Mm, it's a pretty face. Yeah, you wish. Yeah, so they turned out pretty good. Um, lots of little tweaks and uh, intricate things that kind of suck about them. But. Um, live and learn and then get loves that's what I always say so we'll clean them up for the knife show just to have something to show maybe we'll anodize them some crazy color maybe do that fade um, and I don't know be nice to have a nice knife that locks up it's still not gonna be a perfect finished knife yet unfortunately Still got a little ways to go for that, but getting closer every day, I guess. Um, so it's already like 11 o'clock at night, but I think I'm going to drill all of those, um, uh, the thumb stud, the spacers, and the barrel nuts. I want to drill those, tap them, so that um, we can throw a knife together properly for the show. And then tomorrow, maybe we'll make paramilitaries if we have time. And then Friday, we'll be anodizing. And one thing that was really cool today was Eric's been working with me now for about two or three weeks, three weeks, mm -hmm. and just picking up the ropes like a champ. Um, and so today, especially with the tool changer, it makes it quite easier to just bang through a, a code with 10 tools in it. But I just set him at the, the machine and let him go. And uh, it was really cool to be inside or be doing something else or go out and know that he's at home working. <laughs> uh, he's my slave. Oh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. And that was pretty, uh, it went okay for you? Yeah, it went just fine. Um, just had one little problem at the end, but we got that fixed and I just went in and had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that should wrap up uh, week 18. Oh, the other thing was, this morning the first thing I had him do was watch my week 12 video, because that goes over exactly what we did, what I did for handles uh, on week 12, which is exactly what he was going to do today. So I said, watch that video, you know, learn how I did it, and then he goes out into the shop and he goes, oh, I know what to do. <laughs> oh, you got to cut this and mount that. And that was that was pretty cool. It's the point of YouTube. Yeah. So. That's that. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I am nearing a thousand subscribers. I'm at like 920 right now. It's it's insane. Giggity. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm trying to come up with something to do for a thousand subscribers, like a giveaway. 
but um, my machine's been down and I don't have anything extra at the moment to give away, but the machine's all fixed, so maybe we'll come up with something. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.